Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to share what I feel the Lord has given me to share with everyone this morning. I hope and pray each and every one of you will receive a blessing from each and one of these inspirations I have given, the Lord has given me this morning. I'd like to start out with the Father's love letter. The words you're about to experience are true. They will change your life if you let them, for they come from the very heart of God. He loves you, and He is the Father you have been looking for all your life. This is His love letter to you. My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I'm familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered. For you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have my being. For you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake. For all the days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. I knitted you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I'm not distant and angry, but I am the complete expression of love. And it's my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good and perfect gift you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider, and I meet all your needs. My plans for your future have been filled with hope, because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts towards you are countless as the sand on the seashore, and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul, and I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart, for it is I who give you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine, for I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I am carrying you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I will take away all the pain that you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you, even as I love my son Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed, his exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you and not against you and to tell you that I'm not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me, and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home, and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father, and will always be father. My question is... Will you be my child? I'm waiting for you. Love your dad, almighty God. I wanted to share that with you. God loves you, and I do too, and I hope you enjoy that as much as I love sharing. I'd also like to share something. It's 1 John 4, 8, God is love. This is a song, but I like to uh, share the words. It's, Our God is so great, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing our God cannot do. The mountains are His. The rivers are His. The stars are his handiwork, too. Our God is so great, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing our God cannot do. Next, I'd like to share an inspiration I like. It's called My Lord and I. My Lord and I are quite a team. There's nothing we can't do. For if I'm too weak to do it, he's always there to pull me through. Sometimes I'm ready to give up. I'm almost too weak to pray. But somehow he inspires me to fight another day. I always know I'm not alone. His love is everywhere. And although I cannot see him, I feel his presence everywhere. He sometimes speaks through a friend the words I need to hear. 
And when I cry out for comfort, he always lends an ear. Sometimes a certain Bible verse seems written just for me. It helps me cope and gives me hope to be what I should be. My blessings have been a many. My sorrows have been quite a few. My Lord and I are quite a team. There's nothing we can't do. That's by Clay Harrison. Next, I'd like to share an inspiration. Never be discouraged. There's really nothing we need know or even try to understand if we refuse to be discouraged and trust in God's guiding hand. And trust in God's guiding hand to take heart and meet each minute with faith in God's great love, aware that every day of life is controlled by God above, and never dread tomorrow or what the future brings. Just pray for strength and courage and trust God in all things. And never grow discouraged. Be patient and just wait. For God never comes too early, and he never comes too late. By Helen Steiner Rice. It's an inspiration call. If Jesus came to your house, if Jesus came to your house to spend a day or two, if he came without warning, I wonder what you do. Yes, if Jesus came to your house to spend a day or two, if he came unexpected, just dropped in on you. Oh, I know you'd give him the nicest room to such an honored guest, and all the food you serve to him would be the very best, and you would keep assuring him you're glad to have him there, that serving him in your home is joy beyond compare. But when you saw him coming, would you meet him at the door with arms outstretched in welcome to your heavenly visitor? Or would you have to change your clothes before you let him in, or hide some magazines and put the Bible where they'd been? Would you turn off the radio and hope he hadn't heard and wish you hadn't uttered that loud, hasty word? Would you hide your worldly music and put some hymn books out? Could you let Jesus walk right in, or would you have to rush about? I wonder if the Savior spent a day or two with you. Would you go right on doing the things you always do? Would you go right on saying the things you always say? Would life for you continue as it does from day to day? Would your family conversation keep up its usual pace, or would you find it hard each meal to say a table grace? Would you sing the songs you always sing and read the books you read and let him know the things on which your mind and spirit feed? Would you take Jesus with you everywhere you plan to go? And maybe you would change your plans for just a day or so. Would you be glad to have him meet your closest friends or hope that they would stay away until his visit ends? Would you be glad to have him stay forever on and on? Or would you sigh with great relief when at last he was gone? It might be interesting to know the things that you would do if Jesus came in person to spend some time with you. The title of that is Jesus Came to Your House. I wonder what you'd do. That's an inspiration I have here. It's called Jesus Passed By. There is a story of long ago. Men roamed in darkness, nowhere to go. One day the scene changed and they ceased to cry. There was a reason Jesus passed by. Glory and honor be to the King. Shout hallelujah, make praises ring. Look to the future, home in the sky. There was a reason Jesus passed by. Men found compassion and hungry were fed. Some saw their loved ones brought from the dead. They found great comfort, came from on high. There was a reason Jesus passed by. Glory and honor be to the King. Shout hallelujah, make praises ring. Look to the future, home in the sky. There is a reason Jesus passed by. One day a sinner, I found relief. Gone was my burden, gone was my grief. Angels were singing, and so was I. There was a reason Jesus passed by. Glory and honor be to the King. Shout hallelujah, make praises ring. Look to the future, home in the sky. There was a reason Jesus passed by. This is a little inspiration called A Short Story About Nobody. Fred Somebody, Thomas Everybody, Pete Anybody, and Joe Nobody were neighbors, but they were not like you and me. They were odd people and most difficult to understand. The way they lived was a shame. All four belonged to the same church, 
but she couldn't have enjoyed worshiping with them. Everybody went fishing on Sunday or stayed home to visit with friends. Anybody wanted to worship but was afraid somebody wouldn't speak to him, and nobody went to church. Really, nobody was only decent on the four. Only one was decent of the four. Nobody did visiting. Nobody worked on the church building. Once I needed a Sunday school teacher, and everybody thought anybody would do it, and somebody thought everybody should, guess who finally did it? That's right, nobody. It happened that a fifth neighbor, an unbeliever, came to live among them. Everybody thought somebody should try to win him. Anybody could have at least made an effort, but guess who finally won him to Christ? That's right, nobody. Could somebody help? Just anybody will do. Are we nobodies? Let's not be nobodies. This was written by In His Love and given to me from a friend. Next, I'd like to share a poem called the Psalms 23. This is an eye-opener. Some probably never thought nor looked at this psalm in this way, even though they say it over and over again. The Lord is my shepherd. That's relationship. I shall not want. That's supply. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. That's rest. He leads me beside the still waters. That's refreshment. He restoreth my soul. That's healing. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. That's guidance. For his name's sake. That's purpose. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's testing. I will fear no evil. That's protection. For thou art with me. That's faithfulness. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's discipline. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies, and that's hope. Thou anointest my head with oil. That's consecration. And my cup runneth over. That's abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's blessings. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. That's security. And forever, that's eternity. Face it. The Lord is crazy about you. The next one I'd like to share is, I can make a difference. I can make a difference when I allow the Lord to guide, for he, he plans for me to serve with dignity and pride. I may see it seem in, insignificant, yet I have powers God instilled so that I can make a difference in the works that he has willed. Although my efforts may seem small and may never bring me fame, God will know I did my best and that I did it in his name. If I can help alleviate someone's hunger, someone's pain, then my endeavors will restore someone's faith in God again. For God does hear and answer prayers. His love gives countenance to me to serve. He leads the way so I make it, I can make a difference. Next, I'd like to share, closing out, a special poem, Inspiration. It's called A Wedding Invitation. You were invited to a wedding that will be held soon. We are the bride and Christ is the groom. With a crown to wear and a long white robe, we'll walk down the aisle made of pure gold. What is your answer? How will you respond? The groom is asking the bride to come, and the supper will be in heaven, our new home above. Here's a wedding invitation he's sending with love. Now, if Daniel can come from a lion's den, if the fire can touch three Hebrew children, if Lazarus can make it out of the grave, you and I can be, make it by the way of being saved. What is your answer? How will you respond? The groom is asking the bride to come, and the supper will be in heaven, our new home above. Here's a wedding invitation he's sending with love. It's an invitation to everyone to go to heaven. Thank you so much for letting me share these inspirations this week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful week, and I look forward to sharing with you next week. God loves you, and I do too. Take care.